And, you know, I was thinking about this, is that you, that you know how they've uh, – I'll ask you this, Christine. When, when, when you go on a date, how <laughs> long does it take you – and I'm not talking with John Mayer, but the average <laughs> schlub – that you kind of make a decision, like like oh, gosh. I could kind of hang with him or not. There's some, I mean, three minutes. Okay, not even. Okay, three minutes. Beautiful, talented, successful Thank Christine Leahy in three minutes makes her mind up. Absolutely, I'd say I'm probably forty seconds. Yeah, I was being nice <laughs> with with three minutes. Okay, so I'm watching this, and here's the thing: we all make decisions really quickly. Because you don't need a lot of time. We've all watched American Idol. I mean, like nine seconds in, you're like really good and really not. Go watch Carrie Underwood. You can tell really quick, second note, you're like, yeah, she's going to be a big time singer. It's the same with sports. You don't have to sit and watch entire games, but it can help sometimes. But you can watch just granular moments. I remember watching the Jim Harbaugh 49ers a couple years ago when they were really rolling. They were so physical that you could watch two plays on their defense, and they just hit harder than everybody in the league. They were You didn't have to watch the entire game. If you just watched the Niners' defense for two plays, the way they tackled running backs, the way they hit receivers, you, you could never see football and go, that team's more violent and more talented than other defensive teams. They're closing speed. They, I'm watching this World Series, and the, here's the thing about baseball. In football, which is based on physical violence, it's easy to spot strong and weak very quickly. Basketball is based on skill and athleticism. It's easy to spot gifted and average very quickly. Baseball can be a little tougher. It can take a game or two in a series because you're only as good or as bad as you're pitching. But you're watching this World Series. It's over. The Mets have a huge, huge problem. When they faced the Cubs, the Mets staff, it was a great matchup for New York. And you saw it very quickly. Middle of game two, the Cubs had power hitters. Power hitters swing and miss a lot. And the Mets pitchers are power pitchers that make you swing and miss a lot. You could tell very early. The Mets power pitchers were throwing the ball past the Cub power hitters. It was very clear very early. Um, it's not working with Kansas City because, as Tom Verducci said yesterday, this batting lineup for Kansas City, they're all contact hitters. They're all fastball hitters. Here's Verducci yesterday. These Mets pitchers do pound the zone. Great stuff. Don't get me wrong. The Royals, you're almost better off with a guy who's a soft tosser. They were actually more scared about Marco Estrada, and that's how it turned out, you know, throwing 90 and then with that flipped-up changeup. Uh, then they're bothered by velocity or especially strike throwers with velocity because they, don't, they never can see the strike. If the ball is in the zone, they are hacking at it, and they hit good velocity. So actually, talking to some of the Royals people, they were a little more comfortable against these pitching matchups than, say, saying Estrada or R.A. Dickey. Think about that. So the Now, think about that. Entering this series, the Mets had thrown more 95-mile-an-hour pitches than anybody in baseball by far over 6,000. Not even close. The Royals batted 298 against pitches of those speeds. Easily the best in baseball. It's a huge problem regardless of where you play. And DeGrom last night, a remarkable talent. Frustrated because he pounds the zone. Even his manager, Terry Collins, said afterwards, dude, it's obvious. I told Jake, you know, that not everything has to be a strike. You know, you got you to gotta move it around. You got to change speeds. You got to give them something else to look at. The more If you're going to continue to pound the strike zone, they're going to put it in play. And uh, that's what they did. Last night, Jacob DeGrom had only three, think about this, three all-night swing and misses against the Royals. He'd averaged over 20. His previous low was 15. He had three. He's their ace. So you can see very early in this series, it's not saying the Mets can't win a game, but can they now win four of the next five? Kansas City's unbeatable at home. You can see very early in this. You, we've all watched football games, and you're like, oh, crap. I watched Miami and Clemson play this weekend. By the second series, Miami's offensive line could not block Clemson's defensive line. You can't do anything about that. That's just a personnel problem. You could see it instantly. You're like, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. They can't block them. Um, and you watch this series. Think about this. Matt Harvey threw just 30 fastballs among his 80 pitches. That's 37% half of what he normally does. 
what does that tell you? Matt Harvey gave up on his out pitch. That's like when Oregon went and played LSU or Oregon played Ohio State or Oregon plays one of those power teams like Auburn and they quit running the football. Well, hell, that's what Oregon does. Under Chip Kelly, they're a running program. When you quit going to your strength, that's a bad sign. We run the football. We're going to give that up now. Like the young aces for the Mets can no longer throw the ball past any of these Royals hitters. The numbers don't lie. Verducci nailed it. You can see it. The results are there. It is a massive problem for the Mets. Kansas City is going to win this World Series. And they're not going to go down historically as one of the great teams of all time. But I'm telling you, when you got guys who hit 300 against 95 miles an hour, you can match up with anybody all time historically. They don't have stars, so they won't be given the love of the Cincinnati Reds or the Philly great team or the Yankee great. That Kansas City team can can just hit like no team I've ever seen. Their eight hitter and their two hitter are inseparable.